Hello friends, today we will discuss design of cement concrete pavements for low volume roads as given in IRC SP62 of 2014. Rural roads generally have low volume of traffic consisting mostly of light transport vehicles like agricultural tractor, light goods vehicles, buses, animal drawn vehicles, auto rickshaw, motorcycles and bicycles. Some of the rural roads may also have light and medium trucks carrying sugarcane, quarry materials or similar other product. Now if you compare the design methodology given in IRC 58 and IRC SP 62, IRC SP 58 deals with the design of cement concrete pavement for major roads. Now major roads here are defined having daily traffic more than 450 commercial vehicles. Whereas IRC SP62 is applicable only to low volume roads with average daily traffic less than 450 commercial vehicles per day. That is the main difference. And in IRC 62, repetitions of axle loads, curling stresses and consumption of fatigue for different axle loads are not considered. And this document covers the design principles for roads which are 3.7 meter wide. The design factors are same as we have discussed in case of IRC 58, wheel load, tire pressure, design period, characteristics of the subgrade, design traffic, subbase and concrete strength. Now wheel load, the maximum legal load limit on a single axle load in India is on a dual wheel is 100 kN and therefore the recommended design load on dual wheel is 50 kN having a spacing of the wheels as 310 mm center to center. This kind of dual tire assembly. Tire pressure for design is taken 0.8 MPa for trucks with dual wheels and 0.5 MPa for tractor trailer. But there is hardly any effect of tire pressure on the wheel load stresses for all practical thickness of the pavement. Design period is 20 years and the design methodology is based on wheel load stresses. The repetition of axle loads, curling stresses because of temperature and consumption of fatigue for different axle loads are generally not considered in IRC SP 62 except in special situations where heavy truck traffic is also anticipated. Now the criteria for thickness evaluation if traffic is less than 50 commercial vehicles per day, then we consider only wheel load stresses. And there is hardly any probability of maximum wheel load and highest temperature differential between the top and bottom of the rigid pavement occurring at the same time. Therefore, temperature stresses are not considered, only wheel load stresses are considered corresponding to a wheel load of 50 kN. When traffic is between 50 and 150 CVPD, thickness evaluation is based on total stresses resulting from wheel load and temperature differential. And in case of traffic more than 150 commercial vehicles per day, thickness is determined based on the basis of fatigue fracture considering a reliability of 60%. For traffic more than 150 CVPD, fatigue analysis is carried out and for that we find out what is the cumulative number of commercial vehicles at the end of design period using this simple equation where A is the initial CVPD, R is the traffic growth rate and for fatigue analysis we consider only 10% of this N. When traffic is more than 150 CVPD, we take 10% of N for cumulative fatigue analysis. The parameter for subgrade characteristics are same as in case of normal rigid pavement design that strength is considered in terms of modulus of subject reaction which is estimated by plate load test and this is affected by the moisture content also and therefore it is suggested to determine this K value soon after the monsoon when the subgrade is in weakest condition. It can also be estimated from soft CBR value as per table given here. The minimum CBR of subgrade should be 4%. So this table gives you conversion factor from soft CBR to K value. Subbase 
a good quality compacted foundation layer should be provided below a concrete pavement and that is sub base it should not undergo large settlement under repeated wheel load to prevent cracking of slab and there are several reasons why do we provide a sub base below the concrete pavement some of them are given here it provides any form and reasonable support it supports the construction of traffic construction traffic even if subgrade is wet it prevents mud pumping it acts as a leveling course on distorted or non uniform and undulated subgrade and it also acts as a capillary cut off the type of sub bases which are suggested in irc code that for a traffic volume up to 50 cvpd 75 mm thick compacted wbm of grade 3 or wmm may be provided over a 100 mm granular sub base with cbr not less than 30% and liquid limit should be less than 25% pi value should be less than 6% for traffic between 50 to 150 cvpd a minimum 75 mm thick wbm layer over 100 mm gsb material should be provided or 100 mm thick cement tcs granular layer with a minimum unconfined compressive strength of 3 mpa at 7 days can also be provided for traffic 150 to 450 cvpd we provide 150 mm thick wbm of grade 3 or wmm over 100 mm gsb or 100 mm of cementitious granular layer over 100 mm cementitious layer with naturally occurring material with a minimum ucs of 1.5 mpa at 7 days effective modulus of subgrade reaction is important parameter in design of concrete pavement and for Granular sub base, the effective K value can be taken as twenty percent more than the K value of sub grade. And for cement TCS sub base, the effective K value may be taken as twice that of sub grade. And if GSB layer contains fine, which is less than two percent, that can act as a good drainage layer. And if you add two percent cement by weight of total aggregate, that will make it non-erodible. so this table gives you k value over granular and cementitious sub base these values are 20% higher than what was given in the earlier table and these are twice of the the values which are given for sub grade soil concrete strength because concrete pavement fails due to bending stress and therefore it is necessary that the design should be based on a fragile strength of the concrete and this is the formula which is used to determine fragile strength from compressive strength is 0.7 square root of fck both values are in mpa for low volume roads 90 days strength is used for design and the 90 days strength is taken 10% higher than the 28 days fragile strength and 90 days compressive strength is taken 20% higher than the 28 days compressive strength heavy traffic may be allowed after 28 days now for rural roads the tolerance level is taken as 1 in 20 and for this tolerance level the normal variate jet is 1.65 and this is used to find out the target average fragile strength s which will be the mean fragile strength plus 1.65 times standard deviation and this standard deviation depends upon the grade of the concrete and quality of control or degree of control this table can be used to find out the standard deviation so what is suggested in the code is that for pavement construction it is recommended that the characteristic 28 days compressive strength should be at least 30 mpa and corresponding fragile strength should not be less than 3.8 mpa that is the design strength other property of concrete which are required in design mold plus over elasticity that can be taken at 30000 mpa poisson ratio 0.15 and coefficient of thermal expansion of concrete alpha 10 into 10 power minus 6 per degree centigrade
Now, fatigue behavior of concrete pavement. Fatigue behavior is not important for low volume road because of low volume commercial vehicles. But if there is traffic due to any reason, then fatigue analysis must be carried out. Now, fatigue equations for I, given in IRC 58 should not be used to design low volume road because they are valid for 90% reliability. Whereas for low volume roads, reliability can be taken as 60%. And therefore, the equation to determine fatigue life of payment is given here. Log of NF is SR power minus 2.222 divided by 0 0.523, where this NF is the fatigue life of payment subjected to stresses caused by the combined action of wheel load and temperature and SR is as usual stress ratio that is flexural stress divided by flexural strength. Concrete slab behavior is different during daytime and during nighttime. During daytime, the top surface is hot and dry, whereas the bottom surface is cool and moist, and therefore it will curl upward. That is, it will assume a convex shape. Whereas during night, the top surface is cool and the bottom surface is relatively warm, and therefore tension will be at the top and it will curl downward, assuming a concave shape. Now, critical stress regions. The factors which are considered for design of pavement thickness are traffic load and temperature gradients. Two, regional, two regions are critical. The edge of the pavement slab and corner of the pavement slab. But effect of temperature gradient is very less at the corner, whereas it is very high at the edge. And the V load stresses for interior loading are lower than those due to edge and corner loading. And therefore, the stresses either due to wheel load or due to pavement temperature or because of both at edge are critical. So edge stresses are calculated as load stresses plus temperature stresses. The edge stress is given by this equation, which seems to be a longer equation, but if you put value of mu, at 0 0.5, it will reduce to a simpler equation where P is the wheel load, H the slab thickness, we generally assume in the beginning, E modulus of capacity of concrete, K modulus of grid reaction, A is radius of reactive circular area, and L is the radius of relative stiffness. All values are in SI units. Whereas Delta E here is deflection at the edge due to a single wheel load and all these parameters are same as I explained for this equation. Sigma TE is the temperature stresses in the edge region of a slab and it depends upon alpha. Alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion of concrete, T temperature differential and C is a coefficient depending upon the ratio of length or width and radius of relative stiffness. That is either L by L or B by L. So design procedure is like this, that you select a design wheel load, which is generally 50 kN, and also determine the strength parameters of concrete, like flexural strength, effective modulus of subgrid reaction, modulus of elasticity of concrete, Poisson ratio, and coefficient of thermal expansion. If these values are not known, you can assume as given in the code 0 0.15 for Poisson ratio and 10 into 10 to the power minus 6 per degree centigrade for coefficient of thermal expansion. Then select a design thickness. Now there can be three cases. Case one, when total traffic is less than 50 CVPD. So you compute wheel load stresses at the edge of edge for a dual wheel load of 50 kN with a tire pressure of 0.8 MPa and if this stress is less than 90 days modulus of rupture of the concrete, the design is safe. If it is not safe, increase the thickness. Case 2 is when total traffic is between 50 and 150 CVPD. Now here you compute maximum edge stress by adding wheel load stress and curling stresses. 
So temperature stresses and wheel load stresses are computed. And if the total wheel load stresses and curling stress is less than 90 days, model structure of concrete design is safe. Now, to do this, these calculations, Excel sheets are provided, which I am going to discuss it in later. And case three is when you have traffic more than 150 commercial vehicles per day, but less than 450 commercial vehicles per day. Now here, fatigue of concrete is considered, stress ratio is computed, and based on stress ratio, you compute the allowable number of rolled repetitions. IRC has given certain guidelines for providing base and sub base in concrete pavement. For case one and case two, that is up to traffic 150 CVPD, a granular base of 75 mm WBM is recommended below the concrete slab. GSP layer of 100 mm may or may not be provided in case traffic is less than 50, but it is always desirable to have GSB to provide a uniform support. Subgrade soil should have CBR value of minimum 4% and for traffic up to 50 CVPD, that is case 1, minimum thickness should be 150 millimeter. And for case 2, when you have traffic more than 50 but less than 150 CVPD, the minimum payment thickness should be chosen from this table because here temperature stresses are also counted and therefore the payment thickness will depend upon the zone of the area where payment to be constructed. For case 3, the fatigue cracking of payment slab is considered and therefore you need a thicker payment section. Here it is suggested that cementitious subbase should be provided in two layers of 100 millimeter each and accordingly you calculate effective K value. Now here CBR of 8% or K value of 100 MPA should be considered and design thickness, minimum design thickness should be taken from this table. A program Excel sheet is provided for quick computation of thicknesses of payment for all three cases. And this sheet requires certain input data like case one, two, three, depending upon traffic, temperature zone, depending upon area, model of subgrade reaction, depending upon CBR of subgrade soil, elastic models of concrete, which you can take 30,000 MPA, Poisson ratio 0.15, Temperature differential will depend upon the temperature zone and models of structure 4.2 MPA for a M30 concrete. Let us take some example. You take one example where design wheel load is 50 kN, a tire pressure is 0.8 MPA, design traffic 45 CVPD and corresponding to CBR of 4%, K value is 35 MPA per meter from the table given IRC code. Let us provide a base of 75 mm thick WBM and effective K value for this WBM will be 20% more than 35, that is 42 MPA per meter. We don't consider this GSP at this stage and let us say you have a concrete strength of uh, M30, that is 30 MPA compressive strength, 28 days further strength will be 3.834 by this equation and MR value, MR value will be 4.22 MPA. So let us go to Excel sheet and I, I will explain when you change the value of K, value of traffic, how thickness and design will change. Calculation of stresses is very simple when you use this Excel sheet. Now it can consider all three cases, case one, case two and case three. These are the input data which are to be given to the program. Case 1, 2, 3 you have to choose here. Temperature zone 1 to 6 as per the area where payment is designed. So if you choose this here, let us say you change from 3 to 2, then your temperature differential will change accordingly. It will depend upon the area, temperature zone as well as thickness of the slab. The modulus of subgrade reaction is 42 that we assume 4% CBR and, up, and we are providing slab above 75 millimeter WBM layer. The E value of concrete 30,000, Poisson ratio 0.15 and modulus of structure is 4.2. Now this is the input data for wheel load 
that is 50 kN the single wheel load with tire pressure 0.8 and so depending upon the wheel load and tire pressure you get radius of contact that is 180 millimeter the traffic 45 commercial vehicle per day and let us assume that the trial thickness is 0 0.15 now for these input data the L value that is radius of relative stiffness is 673 and stress develop is 4.33 that is now the pavement is unsafe because this stress is more than the modulus of rupture of the concrete 4.2 MPa. Now you have two options either you improve value of K or you increase the thickness of the pavement. Now in the K value can be improved by providing a layer of sub base let's say 100 millimeter sub base so that this becomes twice of the K value of subgrade soil. Let us say 70. Now if you make this 70 and run this program so for the same thickness the pavement now becomes safe because the stress develop is now 3.98 which is less than 4.2. Alternatively you can keep this 42 and you can increase the slab thickness to one to 16 centimeter then also it is safe. Now if it is case 2 let us say in case of pavement having traffic more than 40 more than 50 uh, CVPD then in that case this also becomes active and this will not be active now calculations will be done in case 2. So you have now temperature stresses as well as wheel load stresses. So temperature stresses for this slab thickness and for this temperature zone and you change the traffic also let us say 100. So your temperature stresses is now 0.44 and wheel load stress is 3.93 and total stresses is 4.37 for this trial thickness. This trial thickness is not as per IRC code and therefore you should increase this thickness. Let us say 0.2. Now it is safe. You can try 0.19 also. You can try 0.18 also but keep in mind what is minimum required for this temperature zone and spacing of the transverse joint. Similarly, this case 3, this sheet will be active when you consider case 3. If you put here case 3 and let us say you say traffic is now 300 and this becomes active now. So you can design the payment depending upon traffic condition and depending upon the area where it is to be laid using these Excel sheets. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your comments in the comment box.